Yo, what is up guys? I just got done playing Fortnite, got first place. It took like four tries to get to that today. That was a good round though. If you guys want to play Fortnite with me, add me down below, post your username, and then maybe we can play. But yeah, in this video, I want to share with you guys Alibaba tips that have saved me thousands of dollars, right? And saved my friends thousands of dollars. In the past three years, me and my team have been sourcing from Alibaba in China. And there's a lot of different things that you guys want to know before you guys get started, right? Or if you guys already have started using Alibaba, here's some tips that are really, really going to help you guys out. So make sure you stay to the end so you don't make the same mistakes that I did throughout my journey and how like I lost like a couple hundred dollars, a couple thousand dollars through like just dumb things, all right? So first things first, right? When you're using Alibaba and you're trying to communicate with people in China, you're gonna wanna create a new email address, right? Completely new email address. You wanna get a different Google Voice number, probably hooked up to that same email and you're gonna have to set up Skype, right? So these are the three things that I highly, highly make sure you guys do and get set up with. So first thing, right? Email. Email, you wanna get a new email address because you're gonna get spammed out the ass by the Chinese suppliers. Even if you block them, even if you send them to spam, you're still gonna get bombarded with emails from like a supplier you talked to like three years ago. I still do, they still follow up from time to time. They're doing their job, but look, your inbox is gonna get destroyed, right? So definitely have a separate email address. For Google Voice, uh, it's not super 100% necessary, but sometimes their suppliers will ask for phone numbers. I prefer to give them a Google Voice number because I've had Chinese suppliers suppliers that freaking call me on my cell phone and leave me voicemails and that's like the last thing I want to deal with and it's usually like spam related um, stuff so because when you register an account on like Alibaba or something like that and you like put in your business profile a phone number you're gonna get phone calls from the Chinese suppliers or whoever you're dealing with next Skype Skype is a really useful communication tool it's different than say like whatsapp I mean, it's kind of similar to WhatsApp actually, but it's different than Slack uh, and then some of the other communication tools you've used. Skype is a really common one that's really used between China. So is WhatsApp, I would say too, but I prefer using Skype to communicate with my Chinese suppliers. It's pretty easy to use. You can call them, you can voice call them, you can talk to them too. But most of the time when you're talking to Chinese suppliers, you're gonna be generally either talking to them via email or using Skype chat. One thing I wanna let you know is like for communication, do not use the Alibaba chat. It freaking sucks and it's a waste of time to use. At least from the time I made this video. It's just not a good thing to use, all right? So in general, say you find a product on Amazon and you wanna search it on Alibaba. The first thing you have to do is really identify what your main keywords are for that product. All right, so for example, I'm looking into metal lamp covers. Like this is a product that maybe I found interesting uh, and there's not too many sellers on it. Uh, the ranks aren't too high in terms of like the number of reviews so I'm like okay let's go check out Alibaba and see like how competitive this market is right or how much I can get the goods for all right so you go alibaba.com if you guys don't know what Alibaba is it's like one of the easiest sites to find manufacturers in general right not only will you find manufacturers in China but you'll find manufacturers from all over the planet that use Alibaba generally though most of the suppliers are going to be Chinese on the platform so once you're on Alibaba, you'll go ahead and type in whatever you're looking for. So metal, so for me, this word would be like metal lamp cover, right? Or you can look at like the different products and you can just see like they use the word industrial, right? Uh, mesh wire cage, uh, lamp cover, uh, bulb guard, right? So these are different keywords that you're gonna wanna look and search for your product by. And when you're going through it, just keep that in mind that you want to look at different ones because different suppliers will pop up not every supplier on alibaba has their keyword listing like optimized right for you to like find them so you're gonna have to do a little bit of dirty work yourself in order to find them but once you search them uh the first thing you want to kind of look at is uh, the way i look at it is like i kind of look at all the pictures first right so all the pictures i see which one like matches the design that i want and then next thing i'll do is i look at the price thing you want to keep in mind is that sometimes there's pieces, sometimes there's sets, and there's different things like that. So say like this one's one of four dollars a set, you want to understand what a set is when you contact a manufacturer or before if possible. Right, so if we're scrolling down here, um, it has pictures of the product, there's always like descriptions and different pictures of products. So for this product, I looked through it and although it says a set, I really don't know what a set means, right? 
So you're gonna have to contact the manufacturer and be like, hey, like how many come in a set or how many come in a lot? And then that's how you'll get like your, your quote. So keep in mind, note that when you're using, uh, when you're searching on Alibaba, people in China can use different slang. Um, and what I mean by different slang is they might be using like more British like words, right? So instead of the word like color, they might spell like in the US color is spelled C-O-L-O-R. But in Europe, or I guess in the UK at least, it's spelled C-O-L-U-R, right? And I noticed other words like the word like organizer in the UK is spelled with a Z. And then in the US, it's spelled with like an S in there, yeah. So there's different versions of like how words are like formed on Alibaba with the Chinese search. So keep that in mind when you're searching. So another thing I want to go over is Alibaba Trade Assurance. Right, so what Alibaba Trade Assurance is basically, it's a free service that protects the orders from payment to delivery. So certain suppliers will have this enabled on Alibaba and this gives you like more of a trust factor to work with them. What it just means is you can ship the money, you can wire the money to Alibaba and Alibaba will wire the money to the supplier once you're happy with the product, right? And if you wanna dive in deeper into like how to pay your supplier, make sure you guys watch that video. Okay, so the other thing I wanna tell you about is another thing that Alibaba has called the gold supplier. So it's like this little icon right here, this left one. In terms of being a gold supplier on Amazon, there's a setting for factories to become like gold plus suppliers on Amazon. I, I guess it's gold plus now, that's a new, new change. Uh, it used to be just called gold suppliers, but essentially it's just them paying Alibaba like a $2,000 fee, I think or something, to be like, hey, like uh, I want Alibaba to recognize us as a premium supplier. It doesn't really mean anything after the end of the day, uh, cause you just pay for it from what I understand. So trust that um, badge with a grain of salt. So the other thing that I really want you guys to really check on to save your time is the average response time and the average response rate, okay? So different suppliers have like these metrics here on the search page. Um, this one is the average response rate, right? So they only respond to like 76% of people. This one responds to 88. Anytime it's like really low, then like their communication is just kind of bad and it might be very annoying or long till they respond. But another thing is like once you click onto like say a listing, you can see how many transactions they've done, right? Um, and how many, how much money people have spent, right? And then the response time, you know, generally they respond in less than 20 benchmark number. If they take longer than like 48 hours, then I don't know, their communication is probably slow. And then in terms of response rate, right? Uh, like I was saying, this is how often they respond to every single inquiry. Cause you know, keep in mind these suppliers get, I don't want to say hundreds of inquiries a day, but just dozens of like inquiries a day. And like they have to filter through like who's a serious buyer versus who's not. Another metric that I also want you guys to look at is that's just starting at the top here, right? It says this supplier has been on Alibaba for two years. So generally suppliers that have been on there for like two plus years, you can generally trust they've been on the market for a while. And then this is like maybe like some of the people your competitors may be using, right? Especially if they've been on there a while. It also tells you the location of the manufacturer, right? And then it also really important is that it, they'll tell you if they're a manufacturer or a trading company. Not all trading companies will say they're trading companies just because that people feel like trading companies are middlemen and they like take a huge cut, right? Which they can do, but sometimes it's easier working with a trading company because they have access to all these factories and you can kind of source everything through them, right? That's what happened to some of my friends and that's how they found their sourcing agents. They were working with a manufacturer, but then they found a trading company that just happened to have their products that they were carrying to the trading company was just like hey if there's anything else you guys need to find like let us know and we'll go find it and that's how a lot of my friends found like their sourcing agents basically and then another thing to note about trading companies too i realized that sure you might be paying a premium because they're do they're like kind of head hunting and sourcing their products for you but generally their communication is a lot better right because they want to make the sell and they're like really adamant about uh, just closing deals because they're not the manufacturers of products. They're just the middlemen, just like you trying to connect you with a factory. But if I had to choose between working directly with a manufacturer, directing, working directly with a training company, I would always, always, always choose working directly with the manufacturer. It's just better at the end of the day, the less people that are in between that touch the product, right? That means you're always going to make more money. Okay, and then once we're on like this page too, you kind of just want to look at the pictures of the product, make sure like the quality kind of looks good to you and you can notice different things. And as you scroll down, you'll just see like what materials they're made of. I know it says iron, but 
I'm not sure how iron works, but with steel, there's different grades of steel. So you have to keep that in mind if like, you want this kind of steel, or like you want like a kitchen grade steel, or it's like industrial straight uh, steel. But different materials have different levels of quality, even like plastic, right? There's like PVC, ABS, and different ones like that. So make sure you ask the supplier like, hey, what kind of raw materials is this product made with? Another good tip is like, when you're asking what material it is, they'll tell you, right? But eventually, a lot of you guys are gonna deal with this. Your supplier's gonna be like, the material costs have gone up. And if you don't know what materials it is, you can't really double check them or cross check them. Because sometimes they're like, oh no, the cost of paper has gone up, uh, the cost of steel has gone up, the cost of plastic has gone up, blah, 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 has gone up. And if you don't know what that raw material is, then you won't be able to double check them. That's a very common tactic that suppliers will use to like try not to give you a price break or like ask you to pay more. Sometimes it's true though. Most of the time it's true, but that's just like a common tactic that most people don't know how to double check in a way. So keep that in mind. So as you scroll through it, just make sure you like, you kind of look at the different products they carry. Maybe there's like a different line you want to carry, right? And then it's nice to see like pictures of like their factory, their workshop, their warehouse, their team, the different products, packing and delivery. This is also really important, right? You kind of want to understand like how they're going to pack your products, what packaging options they do have. They're always not going to show all of it generally on the Alibaba website. So you're going to have to ask for that whenever you contact them after you're basically happy with the price, right? So first thing you're always going to ask is like price um, and whatnot. Another point I want to bring up to you is depending on what your product is, you're going to need certifications, right? So in terms of Maybe toys, you need like ASTM um, testing, and that comes from like the SGS testing center. And then with like any health related products, consumables, things like that, you're gonna need FDA approval, especially if it's related to, if you're like making any scientific claims or anything like that, or health claims, you definitely need FDA approval. So be careful on that. So like blood pressure monitors, things like that, medical equipment, like all require like FDA approval. So make sure you have your certifications in place. Make sure you ask the factory like, hey, what kind of certifications do you guys have? And it's always nice knowing that uh, if they do have certifications because it just makes it that much easier because they already paid for it. Generally split the cost with your manufacturer of getting the item certified. And you can be like, hey, if I'm paying half for this, I want this to be an exclusive certification for just my line of products. You can't use this with other your other clients or anything like that. Okay, uh, so keep that in mind because some suppliers will do that uh, once they get to certification they'll share it with all their other clients too but they know they can like offset the cost on you and then for me right when I'm contacting these manufacturers I generally do not like talking to them on Alibaba I'll send them a message with my Skype info I'll have a template that you guys can use in the comments below but essentially I don't like communicating through Alibaba it's just like not really like easy and uh, intuitive to navigate so just generally use Skype and that's the best way to like continue the relationship going forward. So in terms of how many suppliers to contact, right? I highly recommend contacting at least three, right? At least three related to the product that you want, right? The benefits of that is you're gonna get different prices. We're gonna get different ideas on like how they manufacture it and the quality of it, right? So one supplier, like especially if like you notice one price is like a dollar and the other guy's charging two dollars, like that's a huge gap, right? So you need to understand like and ask them like, hey, like why is your product a dollar but like some of the other suppliers are selling it for like two dollars like what's different between your product and their product and then ask all of them that right and they're gonna kind of like talk shit about each other because they want their business right and they'll tell you like oh this guy doesn't have you know the certifications or this guy's material isn't as good right or this guy's material like when it's hot outside it's like starts to melt or something so things like that you really want to ask your supplier and then other places source from right you can don't always have to source from Alibaba, right? If you have a sourcing agent, you know, that's one way to make it way, way, way easier. A sourcing agent, that's what I highly recommend once you like start scaling the business and you have more capital to spend. Get a sourcing agent that'll make your life so much easier because you won't be staying up to like 12 o'clock talking to Chinese suppliers overseas. And also, I've talked about like sites like JD.com and 1688. They're all in Chinese, but go watch my product research series videos and I talk about like how to source from there, right? You can use Google Translate or you can use your sourcing agent to like really help you source on those websites. JD and 1688 are like Chinese websites that are like really huge over there, right? And usually, generally, pricing is better on like 1688 than it is on Alibaba. So another thing I wanted to do in these videos is start uh, answering some of the questions you know that you guys leave in the comments and within the YouTube comments here on the video live. So the first one that we have today is by Sebastian 
Pahera, and he asks, do you guys drop ship or buy bulk from Alibaba? or your manufacturer and send it to FBA. So when it comes to Amazon FBA private label, I always buy from Alibaba and send it straight to FBA. Drop shipping doesn't necessarily work very well on Amazon in my experience, especially you can't do FBA with drop shipping because with drop shipping, you don't have the item on hand. And in order to drop ship the item, right? Uh, in order to use FBA, you have to have your items at Amazon's warehouse. A uh, workaround around that is using Seller Field Prime, but like paying for your own shipping through that method can be very expensive. And most people I know that drop ship, drop ship from Asia. Um, so you're not gonna be able to get your product be a prime item, right? Uh, because it's gonna take more than two days to deliver from China to the US. And if you pay for like, really, really expensive shipping, that's probably just gonna destroy your margins. So I hope that helps you, Sebastian. Tommy Gunn asks, shouldn't auto products being sold on Alibaba by a manufacturer be okay for me to sell on Amazon? No, all right? Definitely not every single product that's on Alibaba is allowed for you to sell on Amazon. So first things first, uh, <laughs> Nick and Fernando were trying to sell lockpicks and they had like $70,000 of inventory and then Amazon banned lockpicks from Amazon, right? So not every product is, uh, you're allowed to sell on Amazon, right? So like lockpicks stuff, like weapon stuff generally, anything marijuana related, you cannot sell. Amazon has a list of like things you can't sell on Amazon. The other thing you want to keep in mind too is that Amazon def is starting to like ask for more certifications for certain products, right? So if your product, you know, doesn't have the certifications that it needs and Amazon asks for it, your ASIN is just going to get blocked until you get those certifications. And so that's why it's really important to like make sure your manufacturer has those certifications. So when Amazon asks, right, or when a customer like complains about something or you get sued and you don't have these certifications, then you're going to get screwed, <laughs> essentially. And no, from like different Amazon.com to the UK to like different Amazon platforms, the rules are all different, right? And different and between like the different countries too, like the countries itself have their own rules and their own testing uh, certifications that they require. Like in Europe, it, it's like a different thing that they require versus like the US when it comes to like toys or like health and different products like that, right? The state of California requires like different things too for like you to label on your product too. Brandon Weston, this was a question within uh, the Facebook group though. He asks, is anybody ever source a product from DHgate instead of Alibaba? So DHgate is like another Chinese website, but I found DHgate to be full of trading companies and like you actually don't get the best price on DHgate in my personal experience, right? So I highly recommend you just stick to Alibaba and that's where like the meat of like the real manufacturers are in my opinion and in my experience. The good thing about DHgate though is I found that if you're like testing out a product, you can get lower MOQs on DHgate than you can on Alibaba. So I'm glad you guys enjoyed this entire video, but make sure you guys do not forget to make it to the workshop where I break down the three major discoveries that I made along the way to building a million dollar business on Amazon. See the link in the comments below for details to attend that workshop. But other than that, like, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave me some comments on like what other questions you have about Alibaba or anything in general, right? And then make sure you, give, you guys give this video a thumbs up. That really helps me out. And let me know if you guys have any other tips that we should share with the community too. Leave them in the comments below. See you guys.